I'm with uh, Alistair McDonald. My name is Hanjin. We have a lot of whiskeys on the table, a lot more under the table, which we're not going to show you. We do not want to look like reprobates. We're here to talk about Barley Nectar. It's Alistair's NFT offering of a brand new boutique whiskey experience. You'll never have it uh, anywhere else and definitely not through the form of NFTs. There are a couple of questions I really want to ask though. This will be a unique um, whiskey club with uh, 12 unique experiences uh, plus a brand new barrel of um, first in the world and barley nectar label whiskey. You're so young. Thank you. <laughs> how is it that you know so much about whiskeys and, and how, how can we convince a, a, a new drinker or a collector that you know so much within the short span of this interview? Alistair, what makes you so smart about whiskey? Firstly, thank you. I've grown He's up... It's not meant to be a compliment. <laughs> okay. I'm just thinking. Did I? We very, I very much grew up in and around the whiskey industry. So as a family, I'm now the seventh generation consecutively to work within the drinks and the whiskey industry. Uh, we, my forebear, Long John, set up the Ben Nevis Distillery, which we had for five generations. That was eventually sold in the 1950s. My grandfather then set up a new whiskey brand and distillery in Glencoe in the West Highlands. My father, he owns a brewery, he's also in the booze industry, and I've worked in the whiskey and spirits industry for quite a long time. So it's been very much part of our DNA and sort of we grew up in and around it forever and ever and ever. So there's some secrets that no one in the world knows about making whiskeys that only you guys know. It's kind of like the KFC 12, 12 secret spices kind of thing. I, I guess something like that, yeah. <laughs> So if you could tell me, but you'd have to kill me. Of course. Yes, that's my normal threat. That's terrible. What about yourself? Like, you've, you've done a lot of work in, in the whiskey world. Yeah. And in, in, in Europe and, and in Asia. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. So in, in the UK, when I was working in London, that was really on the marketing side for spirits companies. So by all means, whiskey. We did lots of different launches with different whiskey brands. But beyond that, I did work with gins and, and vodka. Gin is particularly popular and trendy in the UK, well, and globally, but in the UK at the moment. Mm. When I came out to Asia, I was initially working in the sort of high-end... Peaky blinders. <laughs> I was working in the high-end, expensive sort of bottle and burgeoning cask sort of trade and industry. As an industry, that's been doing incredibly well for the last 10 years. So a lot of my job is really in educating people in Hong Kong and, and wider about how the whiskey industry works, what the opportunities are in there, and what the whole sort of landscape looks like. Because um, I feel extremely passionate about the whole thing. What Barley Nectar means to him. So Barley Nectar as a project is something I'm incredibly excited about. It's a kind of first of its kind whiskey club. And the premise behind what we're doing is that for the first time, we're allowing our members to really have an integral role in terms of what we make and what we produce and what we bottle. There is a sort of commercial and investment aspect to it too, but the fact that we're able to marry both of these things together is never been done before, and it's like a new kind of project. So it's an NFT offering though? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how many elements are there in there? By an NFT offering, one thing I would say is that every NFT we have, we have an underlying physical asset alongside it. So in this case, obviously whiskey, be it either a bottle of whiskey or a cask of whiskey. So. The members receive 13 NFTs. The first of these is kind of like their um, digital membership card, if you will, and that's called the Angel Share. It's kind of a slightly bad pun on part of the whiskey making process. Now, the Angel Share NFT comes with the rights to a full barrel of whiskey, which is 200 liters. It's like a, a lot of whiskey, frankly. 280 bottles. Yeah, quick maths, that's good. Uh, the other 12, so they also receive every month for one year, they receive a, a bottle NFT along with the control over what whiskey is going into that particular bottle. So and what, what, what cast it, what cast it goes into? Uh, in essence, exactly that. So every month we present the membership with a choice of three different whiskey finishes for um, that particular month's cask. What could the choices be, for example? Uh, so. The most popular in the market is sherry. So a lot of companies do like sherry finished whiskey as a, you know, as a flavor profile. We're certainly going to include some. So Oloroso sherry, Pedro Zimenez sherry. There's so much more you can do than that. 
So, for example, sort of if you look at wine, we're looking at some um, Saint-Emilion Grand Cru Bordeaux Greeks in our first month. Uh, excuse me, so we can do rum, you can do possibly even looking at Baijiu, which has never been done before, and we'll see how it turns out. But at the end of the day, the membership in control, you know, we give them great options, but then they're the ones who actually pick each month what they're going to go for. So members get to vote and decide what uh, how their how their whiskeys are, get, are getting finished. Yes, correct. And this will happen twelve times. Exactly. Over the course of twelve months. Over the course of twelve months. When's the first bottle going to come? <laughs> so timing wise, the membership itself launches on September the thirtieth of twenty twenty two. So this year, and then the first bottle release. So the first time they're able to make that vote on what they want in the glass is on the fifteenth of October. So it's basically mid month, and then obviously then again fifteenth of November. December, so, so and when, when will the first bottle um, be available to be received or transacted? So there's two parts to this. The way it works is that every month they vote on what they want to finish, as in which finishing option they're going to use. The, the practical side of this is that we then get our mature cask, which could be a, let's say, 10 to 25 year old barrel from lots of famous distilleries. We'll decant it into a new finishing cask, which is what that finishing process means. Rum, sherry, cinnamon, Rum, blah, sherry, blah, wine, blah. Whatever, whatever it might be. It then has a 12-month secondary maturation process before we then bottle it. So in terms of what the member receives, that month they immediately receive the bottle NFT, which they can hold on to or trade. It becomes redeemable, so the liquid itself is ready to drink, 12 months from that date. 2023. October. Correct, exactly. So exactly 12 months after the birth. The first bottle, October 2023. Exactly. And a year from there. That's 12 bottles. When did he get the 280 bottles? So I think of it as a barrel rather than a 280 bottles. So the timing of this is that the liquid is going into the cask, so it's getting filled. And into your stomach. <laughs> In uh, summer, summer 2024. So that's basically in June or July 2024. One key thing is that we're including 10 years of free storage for both mm. the bottles and the casks yeah. in our warehousing in Scotland. So in terms of time frame, you know, we look after it for you. The, the cask itself, whiskey casks get better with age. You know, when, when you have a bottle, it doesn't mature. But yeah. with a barrel, the longer you hold it, the more it matures, the more the flavor profile comes through and Frankly, the more the price goes up, you know, there's no such thing as cheap old casks of whiskey. So that aspect is you can hold on to it as long as you want. You can also choose to bottle it and drink it all if you want, but that's 280 bottles. It's quite a bit to drink yourself. Mm, which I wouldn't put it beneath you. <laughs> so it's 12 bottles of whiskey, 12 NFTs, one for each bottle of whiskey. And on top of that, you get a membership um, NFT and you get a cask that will be ready before 12 bottles is being delivered in July, am I right, of 2024? Uh, yeah, there'll be overlap then. Yeah, there'll be an overlap, which means options. So that's the whiskey part of it. Uh, before we move on to the NFT aspect of things, and talk about the stuff that I'm more familiar with, let's talk, uh, let's talk a, just a little bit more about um, the whiskey aspect of things. 10 years of, of storage is a big deal because you get to age and you don't have to move it immediately. If you're new to collecting whiskeys, this is a huge convenience. Um, but on top of that, veteran whiskey collectors will be curious to, why NFTs and how, are there gonna be, are there still gonna be traditional contracts as per uh, uh, Virgin Barrels? Mm. So to, to break that down, to start with, in terms of why are we using NFTs? Like what's, why are you use blockchain for this particular kind of project? The reason we're doing this is this technology has the, cap the ability to add a lot of value to everybody across a more traditional industry like whiskey. So if you look at it, the main features I find it brings to what we're doing, one of the most obvious perhaps is liquidity. So if you imagine you have, we have physical barrels, bottles stored in the Highlands. If to, to sell them traditionally, what you need to do is go to an auction house, which is both expensive and a hassle and you can be issues of provenance and all the rest of it. You then have to go and physically post it to somebody across the world if that person then bought it. By having a digital representation of that physical asset, whilst, as I say, we store everything securely, trading the ownership is extremely fast, extremely easy, extremely inexpensive, and just a much better approach than the more traditional sort of route there. Okay, so the target chain is gonna be Ethereum, right? Yes, correct. 
Alistair, what's so fun about this NFT project? I mean, like when you when you were telling me about it, and we were brainstorming about B A R L E Y and like oh, yeah. and the graphics, and you were like you're telling me how like uh, all the graphics going to be printed on the insides of the bottle. They're going to be super colorful. You have all kinds of animals, <laughs> and, and and everybody has his own theme, uh, different terroirs, um, twelve different regions, uh, geographical mapping, flavor mapping, all the exciting stuff, and a lucky draw. Yeah. Um, what's the most fun part of all, all of this? The most fun part of it. I'm really excited about doing something new in this space. I think the fact that a lot of this has never ever been done before. Yeah. And we're going to end up with some really exceptional liquids, exceptional whiskey, that in many cases will have never been done before. You know, completely exclusive, unique products. Like what? Well, to give you an example, let's put it like this. The parameters for me are that every single whiskey each month is already a fantastic liquid that's ready to drink. Mm -hmm. Okay? So yeah. the basis for me is that I present the group with fantastic whiskey that you could drink now and it tastes awesome. But then really interesting finishing options on top of that many of which I'm trying, you know, we're sourcing these far and wide in terms of unusual bits and pieces. When you pair those together, it, it'll always, in every single case, be a new thing. You know, we're doing single cast releases in the first place, and you already have a pretty unique mix. But say, for example, if you get like a, um, think what would happen with a really smoky Isla whiskey, and then you could pair that with Mezcal. You do a Mezcal barrel finish on like an Isla smoky whiskey. That's pretty cool. See what happens with that. Um, you could do something more traditional. You know, Excuse me, you can do sherry notes with the space size and all the rest of it. But, you know. So in a nutshell, you're, you're, you're going you're gonna to help whiskey lovers curate 12 experiences that they would not necessarily and probably will, might, might not even be able to find on the market. A lot of them don't exist on the market. And this is a, a large part of the point here. Like if you look at about the, say if you look at value in, in whiskey, so whiskey has become extremely expensive and all the rest of it, especially the sort of higher end bottles. Mm -hmm. Part of that, and this is admittedly only one part of this, but it's about how they're marketed and how they're promoted and the scarcity of them in the first place. Every single month, we're only doing 400 bottles a month to the 400 members, right? Mm. Now, as they get redeemed, you can see how many of those are left. So let's say in one given month, it's 400. Half of the membership want to drink them immediately because they can't wait. All of a sudden, your bottle goes from one of 400 to one of 200. And that's quite an interesting aspect, you know, having that complete transparency. So you're doing the whiskey supply. version of... Uh, Damien, Damien Hurst, the currency. Sure, yeah, 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 yeah. I guess in that sense, yeah. Yeah, that, but, that, that's fun. Well, it's interesting because it's, it's one of the uh, options that this kind of technology brings that was never really possible before this. You know, blockchain technology and NFTs are so well suited to adding that transparency to traditional marketplaces. That I think that's uh, quite a cool aspect of all this, right? I don't want to have two of the same kind of release. So the whole idea here is that over the course of the 12 months, you talk about 12 different regions. The idea is that more that we have 12 disparate flavor profiles. You know, we're trying to tick off as many of the boxes and sort of demonstrate the full range of whiskey options available within Scottish whiskey. As a member, the other thing you can do is you don't need to drink it all, right? So say, for example, if one month you didn't like the sound of whatever that was, by all means, trade it on. You leave, it for your, it. leave it for your dad. Leave it for your dad. Well, give it as a gift. You know, there's a lot of options available to you rather than having to drink every drop of your So um, we'll see you and let's get this hamster drunk. Till next time. Cheers. Thank you.